and a warm welcome to episode 85 of Lisburn Distillery TV. Coming up on today's show, we have exclusive highlights from Lisburn Distillery's game on Saturday when they made their opening appearance in this season's Irish Cup. We hear from midfielder James Wright who shares his post-match thoughts on that particular game. We'll have exclusive coverage from the tee box of this season's Lisburn Distillery Golf Classic. We have news and two forthcoming off the field events happening shortly at the club. And finally we'll be looking ahead to this Saturday when we entertain Shangri United in the last 16 tie in the Steel Suns Cup. A packed programme ahead then, so let's get straight into the action. With the match highlights which this week features action from the Irish Cup game which was played here last Saturday when Lisburn and Slurry made their entrance into this season's Tennis and Irish Cup. Wellington Rec provided the opposition in a second round game which was played here at New Grosvenor, and whereas the Whites went into the game as clear favourites, however, as with all cup competitions, there's always a hint of a possible giant killing in the air. Let's see how the game turned out. Here's the match highlights. <laughs> So a comfortable enough win for Lisburn to study then in the end, however the downside was the number of missed chances that went begging on the day. Not mentioning any names in particular but Stevie Hislop, Paul Young, Johnny McCaw, what can I say? Anyway, thankfully the missed chances didn't have a negative effect on the final result. And the Whites now find themselves in round three of the competition. I spoke to midfielder James Wright at the club's golf day on Sunday to get his thoughts on the game and here's what James had to say to LDT. James, uh, thanks for joining us today after the golf day. We're going to talk obviously about yesterday's game mm -hmm. and the Irish Cup. A win, overall thoughts on the match though? Yeah, again, it's a win to win, sort of, it's a cup match. Um, the main aim is to get through the, the next round. But it can always be a wee potential banana skin, uh, playing sort of amateur league teams. Uh, but they might give it a go, but um, in the end we're, we're easy winners eventually. A lot of missed chances. But, <laughs> the score could have been, could have been anything really. Yeah. Uh, 
in the second half, I sort of penned them in and played most of, well, most of the games played in the second half. But I gave them a missed guilt by chances and maybe look past it if you weren't creating them chances. But I mean, 2 0 winning the next round. And, it's a more important thing. Uh, next week, a change of cup action, then we're back to the. Uh, Sons Cup. Sons. Uh, we're playing Shangri United, another tough game. It'll be a tougher test. Obviously, we played them pre season, so we know, we know a wee bit about them, and they'll, they'll be the same as us. We know what they're about. And, um, they'll get stuck in, it'll be a battle, but I think we should have enough to, to get through. And that's, that's a cup we, we want to be one of. And a good day out in Christmas. Sounds good to me. And finally, on today's golf day, how did the golf go today? <laughs> <laughs> Best not mention it. Nightmare, nightmare to be fair. Um, first good drive, well, first, good first drive, good drove, drive. Drove well, but apart from that, mm -hmm. putting was, was awful. Big mm -hmm. steel to be fair, and he was good, surprisingly. Right. Uh, but no, enjoyable day, it's good and nice to be with the boys. Like. So it's been a big weekend of golf over the last few days, and one big event has of course stolen all the headlines. The Lisburn Distillery Golf Classic, of course. Here's some action from the opening tee box on the day. So the first distillery player getting ready to tee off at this 18-hole wonderful course. It's uh, young Matthew Ferguson. And how confident must, must this young man be? He's playing with an iron, no less. No wood off the tee for Ferguson. It's an iron. He must be very confident of his own ability. Getting ready to address the ball. Oh, and that's straight down the middle, straight down the fairway. He'll be well pleased with that. Great shot, Matthew. Next is the repair up then. It's uh, Timothy Clark. And look at the effort he has made with his dress sense today. Immaculately dressed for a game of golf. And the club's actually bigger than the player himself on this occasion. But he's taking his time. He's addressing the ball. He's looking, looking, and looking again. That's not a bad shot, young Timothy. Well played, he'll be well pleased with that one. Good distance in that one as well. Next up, it's uh, Sid Young the second. Getting ready to dress the ball. Oh, there's somebody in the distance. I think he's going to aim for him. Getting, looking at a good looking at him. Can he actually hit him right on the head? Oh dear, he seems to have hurt his back. It seems to be an injury. He's young going to have to withdraw. Ah, oh, thankfully he seems to have recovered. Said Young the second then back onto the tee box. Short hanging out. Looking down the fairway. Straight aim. Big club head. Oh, didn't get much height in that, but there's good distance and there's good position on that one. And once again, a straight down the middle. Well played, Sydney. Well played. And next up, it's James Wright. Looks like he knows a little bit about golf, this chap. Well dressed for the occasion. Dressing the ball very professionally. Head up, having a good look around. And you know what? That's not a bad shot from young James Wright. Good shot. It drags itself round and onto the fairway. And once again, he looks well pleased with that one. So the last distillery player to tee off, it's Stephen Sticky Hislop. And he's not taking any time in the tee box. Straight in, straight ready to go. And he's dragged it completely to the left. Bit like a shooting on Saturday. Well off target. Sadly, none of our list burn story players could live up to their initial drives, with the eventual winner of the event being Chris Davis. Massive well done to Chris on his success, and also on behalf of the club, a massive thank you to everyone who supported the event. Whether it be by playing on the day, hold sponsorship, or simply turning up to support the golfers on the day, your support is greatly appreciated. It's time now to look ahead to a couple of future events which are coming up at the club. A European Legends lunch will be held at the club on Saturday the 13th of October ahead of our home game versus Sport and Leisure. This event has been hosted to recognise the amazing feats of the distillery teams in 1963 and 1971 and we're pleased to confirm already that Roy Welch, Joe and Derek Meldrum, Sid Patterson, Jack Kennedy, Peter Watson, Alan McCarroll, Tommy Brannigan, George Lennox, Joe Patterson, Jimmy Burke and Jim Savage, amongst others, have agreed to join us for the event. Further details on this event can be found on the club website. The next of our biannual Greyhound racing events takes place at Drumbo Park on Saturday, October 13th. 
Tickets for this event, which include a four-course meal and full table service, are priced at a special club rate of only £20 per person, are currently on sale at the club. Further details on this can be found on the club website and through social media. Next up for Lisburn Distillery sees a return to Steel and Sons Cup action with what promises to be a highly entertaining and hard-fought game against Shankill United. This match will be played here at New Groven this Saturday, that's Saturday the 6th of October and supporters should note the earlier kick-off time in this one at 2.30pm. As ever your support for Lisburn Distillery on the day would be greatly appreciated. So that brings us to the end of episode 85 of LDTV. Thanks as ever for watching and for your ongoing support for Lisburn Distillery. Until the next time, it's bye for now, but don't forget, come on you whites! <laughs>